Today's video is the second part of a budget meal preparation thing that originated with the idea of using the Too Good To Go app for the shopping. That part is linked in the card and description and if you haven't watched it, spoilers, it didn't go that well. In part one I was a bit disappointed with the items I got in my surprise bag and the additional pound to spend in the supermarket to round things out didn't really go that far. It was a big old flop, but there it is. Here in part two, I'm going to take the same budget, £5 in total, to a supermarket, specifically Lidl, to see what we can get by just shopping. Rules and parameters will be the same, except the bits that were specific to Too Good To Go, so I won't repeat them in detail here. Let's go shopping. OK, well, we've got this waste knot box for £1.50. Well, we will get it for £1.50. So what we've got in there is a couple of courgettes, pears, an orange, apple, two tomatoes, a pepper, some potatoes, a cucumber, some more tomatoes and raspberries. Really good for £1.50. And have a hunt around in the fresh meat section. So we've got some chicken drumsticks there for £2.09. Not bad, quite a few there. Some pork loin steaks for two pounds twenty-three. Is that not bad? Burgers, beef kebabs, three pounds fourteen. I could, I mean, I could get those, but I think we can do better. Chicken wings. Now these were cheap to begin with, but down to eighty-eight pence. Yes, please. One pound and four for a chorizo. That is tempting, but Jenny's not a fan. I think maybe we can do something with that. Six. Fifty-two. Yeah. bit of money left. I could get a packet of spaghetti, but I think I don't need it. Get a tin of beans. I'm going to get the beans. I know I always get baked beans, but, you know, in terms of nutrition versus price, they are one of the better items. It's just the way it goes. Okay, right, let's get that to the checkout. That compared to what we got for Too Good To Go plus the pound top up, pretty good isn't it? Okay so bearing in mind that the Too Good To Go app is all about saving money by being there at the right time of day, here's what you get if you go to little at the right time of day which happens to be quite early in the morning. That lot was £1.50. This is their waste not boxes, they have them at the front of the store, I think most stores do this there's a limited supply of them, although there are quite a few of them today. So we've got two pears, an orange, an apple, some raspberries, two courgettes, not like I need more courgettes, an orange, a cucumber, a bulb of garlic, a wonky looking pepper, a couple of tomatoes, five potatoes, a punnet of mixed tomatoes. Actually really good. But that wasn't all, because that's only a pound fifty out of our five pound budget. I also got chicken wings, 88 pence, some muffins, 52 pence, a pea shoot salad for 55 pence, mozzarella, I can't remember how much that was, 60 something pence I think, of course a tin of beans, and a pack of sage and onion stuffing mix. So. That was all a fiver, in fact that came to less than a fiver, and I don't really think there's any problem with assembling this into three quite interesting meals. Right, here's the thing, these raspberries are, they're good, but they are on the point of going over. So because this has got to last until tomorrow morning, I'm going to just gently cook these and make a little raspberry compote. The pears, they are still under ripe, so I'll cook them in with this. 
appreciate that peeling them we are losing some of the weight or volume of what we bought but if you're going to poach pears leaving the skins on is not that pleasant but your mileage may vary hmm, they actually smell really nice and aromatic Okay, and then I'm just going to lose that bit in there, which is just the core. Pears don't have much of a core, just this slightly woody bit inside. I think I might save the other one actually, and we'll keep that as little crunchy accents on the dish I have in mind. Well, let's taste a bit. Mm, it's actually quite sweet, even though it's still a bit crisp. Okay, so just one of those pairs in there. And yeah, the raspberries, yeah, they definitely wouldn't stand another day. They're, they're okay, they're not mouldy or anything, they're just uh, a little bit squishy. So from the cupboard sort of flavorings, about half a tablespoon full of sugar. I'm just gonna let the juice of those fruits cook themselves down. Still stained with bilberry juice. So hopefully the natural sugars in the fruit, as well as that tiny bit of sugar we added, will just caramelize a little bit and it'll thicken down to almost like a jam. It's not enough sugar in there to call it a jam. And we'll just simmer that gently just to drive off a bit more of this moisture. So that's still a bit warm, but I'm gonna get it out the pan now before it sticks in there because it's gone quite jammy. Nice balance of sharpness and sweetness there. Right. This is what we're preparing for breakfast. I'm going to split some muffins and make kind of pizzas, except they're pizzas that are going to upset some people. I'll just fork and split these muffins. Forking them like that, as I've mentioned in previous videos, gives them a lovely crumbly surface. So I'm going to toast those. I think probably two each is enough. I'm sure pizza purists will be delighted to see that I am using mozzarella for my pizza. It's not really the right kind of mozzarella for pizza, it's a bit too wet, but it'll be fine for this though actually. It'll be fine for what I've got in mind. I'm going to dice this. Probably would be easier to crumble it, but... Right, this pear. Is it still a pear when there's only one of them? This time I'm not going to peel it. I'll just get that stalky bit off. Find the core, which is not central this time. And three quarters of this pair, I'm gonna dice up. That goes in with the cheese. Tiny little splash of vanilla extract. Just a little drizzle. That piece of pear I'll set aside. My toasted muffins. I'm going to get a little blob of this. This is the raspberry and pear compote that I made yesterday. Just about enough for all four. So that's the kind of tomato sauce for my mini muffin sweet pizzas. Sweetsas. And then the cheese and pear mixture. Going to get carefully balanced on top. Pretty good. Okay, that's used all of it. Those are going to go under the grill for about five minutes, maybe. Okay, and we're going to stop there. Just an ever so slight bit of toasting on there. I don't want to go any further, or else the muffins are going to catch. But the cheese has melted. The whole thing's warmed through. I think we're ready to plate up. This last little piece of pear. I'm just going to slice very thin and then each one can have just a couple of little bits as a garnish. Okay, well there it is. Fruity breakfast muffin pizzas. I've no idea what this is going to be like but I think it's going to be good. The cheese might be hot, it's melted so Okay, well, dig in and let me know what you think. So these are fruity breakfast muffin pizzas.
Mm. Good? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that works. Mozzarella like that is such a mild neutral cheese that I mean, it's really just like cream, isn't it? Mm. Basically. And the advantage of those raspberries being so overripe is they didn't need so much sweetening. Oh, they're nice. Mm. I mean, like half a tablespoon of sugar in those raspberries. Well, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. Jenny's mm. verdict? Yeah, I think it's lovely. Success. So, would you have that again? Yes, I would. Yeah? Lovely. Mm. I think that actually would stand a more cheesy cheese as well, mm. because it's pear and it now fruit and cheese goes very well. So whilst it was really nice with the mozzarella, because it's like mild and creamy, I think you could probably get away with a... Yeah, a different sort of cheese. Yeah, like a Cheshire or something actually, a, a sharp acidic yeah. cheese. Yeah. Okay, well we enjoyed that. In that waste not box from Lidl, there was a cucumber. And as I've mentioned previously, cucumbers are problematic for me. A couple of years ago, cucumbers just started tasting awful to me. This one's a little bit squishy. I think it's been damaged. It's been snapped or something. But there's plenty of good stuff down here. So I'll cut that piece off and we'll deal with that later. But I thought I might try making a quick pickle because I can eat gherkins and cornichons and dill pickles and whatnot without any problems at all. It's just raw cucumber. Yeah, it just smells and tastes weirdly stale to me. There are a few bruises and blemishes on this, on the skin actually, so I'm just going to cut down to, yeah it's not great actually, so we'll get a, a decent piece out of the middle of this. Okay, and I'll slice that into fairly small wedges, into a big bowl. I'll see if there's anything worth rescuing on this end bit, but yeah, it's, it is a little bit past its best, this cucumber. Might as well rescue what we can. Now this is a quick pickle. This will be ready in half an hour. And unlike a regular pickle, it won't keep for longer than a couple of weeks. And it needs to be refrigerated, so it's not a preserve. Right, I think all of this is going to get composted. The plastic will come off first, obviously. And that will go in the recycling. But yeah, I'm not going to try and save any of those bits. We'll compost the rest of that. About a teaspoon of salt. About a tablespoon of sugar, and then I'll just toss that in that salt and sugar to get it nicely coated. That's going to draw some of the moisture out of here. It now smells awful to me because it's cucumber, but we'll see what happens after it's sort of dry brined like that. Now I'll just cover that up and we'll leave that for about 10 or 15 minutes. That's been about 15 minutes. Let's just have a look and see what's come out of there. So yeah, quite a lot of liquid is coming out. I'm going to put half of this in one cup. I'm going to make two versions of this. One for me, one for Jenny, because I'm not even sure Jenny's going to want any, actually. She's not a massive fan of pickles. But then for myself, I'll get rid of that liquid. And then for this version, just a few chilli flakes. Now, another way to get rid of the weird flavour of cucumber might be to peel it. But... I don't know, peel cucumber, you might as well just not bother. And I have made more for myself here than I made for Jenny, because as I say, Jenny might not even want pickles. And of course it's possible, I might not want them. Okay, not finished yet. Cider vinegar, I'm just gonna add enough to go about halfway up the cucumbers. The remainder will be topped off with water. And I'll just give that a little mix just to get the vinegar and water mixed. That now goes in the fridge for at least half an hour and it will do a little bit of pickling. We're going to put lunch in the oven to cook in a minute. I'm going to use this sage and onion stuffing mix. I'm going to cook this along with lunch, but I'm probably going to serve most of it with dinner. So the directions are to make this up with 400 ml of boiling water. I'm going to go a bit under that because I want to make dense stuffing balls. The reason for that will become apparent later. So I'm going to go for 300 ml of boiling water. Which is about there. 
and dump that in and mix it up. This cost I think 49 pence. I could have bought a loaf of bread for that probably or I could have bought something else, some flour. I wanted something sort of carbohydrates to go with dinner and so I thought this might be nice because it's got a good flavour. It is just breadcrumbs together with dried onion, salt, palm oil, dried sage, dried parsley. And that's it really. These chicken wings. Quite a decent amount of chicken wings and they are full wings so they've got a fair bit of meat on them. So about a teaspoon of salt, about a rounded teaspoon of paprika. And I'll just give that a little massage in. The other half on the surfaces that weren't quite so well coated. And then at the same time, these potatoes, I'm going to bake them in here. Just a couple of little jabs to make sure they don't go boom. Tomatoes, these big tomatoes are, well, one of them's gone really wrinkly. I'm going to bake them as well. So uh, no, I'll put them on a shelf next to them. The garlic. Just going to carefully make sure there's no mould in there. That's a pretty good bulb of garlic, actually. Take off some of that paper. Okay, that can go in there as well. This pepper. Well, I'll reserve some of the nice ripe bit for the salad. The rest of it, minus the seeds and core, hack up into chunks. So that can go in with the chicken. And also one of the courgettes. This one's the one that's kind of most like a marrow, so this will need a bit more cooking. I think we might find that that's no good inside there. It's a little bit woolly. Yeah, it's a bit far gone, that one. No one that's, yeah. That's that courgette. I think that'd be okay if we're making chutney, but I think that's too far gone for use now, so it won't be wasted. I'll compost it. This other one though, I think is okay. I, mean, I think those courgettes were probably picked a little bit late, to be honest, because they're a bit pithy. I don't think those have ever been great, but never mind. I'll get the pith out the middle there. That'll just turn into mushy, watery pulp when it's cooked. So I'll get rid of that. And then what's left, and again that can go in with the chicken. And what I'll do here is I'll kind of post it underneath so that it bakes but also absorbs some of the juices of the chicken. If I'd thought more carefully about this of course I'd put that in the pan first, but you know. Anyway, right that lot's going to go in the oven now for probably about an hour just to bake and crisp up. This stuffing mix is now cool enough to handle. I'm going to form that into little balls. This doesn't need to go in the oven yet. This will take about half as long as the chicken. So I'll set a timer and I'll put this in halfway through. So 11, 10 and a half stuffing balls. Not bad. It's time to taste this quick pickle, or as I like to call it, quickle. This has been in the fridge for about an hour now. I'm going to taste a piece of this one. Hmm, still got that weird cucumber flavour, but actually with the vinegar, it is more palatable. And the spicy one? Hmm, that's much better, strangely. So I think it's a case of other things offset it. Yep, that I can eat. How bizarre. I think probably sometime I ought to just try some fresh cucumber with vinegar on it. Maybe it's just the vinegar that offsets the, the weird flavour, or maybe it neutralises it in some way. So about halfway on this chicken and some bits are nice and crispy, other bits need a bit longer, definitely. So I'll turn it all over and we'll give that another half an hour. The juices, I think we'll just baste back over the top of the chicken. Right, so the stuffing balls I'm just going to perch them on top here, like this. I'm going to put a couple down here, and they will soak up the juices 
from that meat. And that was the purpose of stuffing back in the day, is obviously it would extend the meat by absorbing all the juices and flavours of the meat and you'd serve it alongside and it would just kind of stretch the meal. The roasted tomatoes are looking very good. This is going to be part of dinner, so I'm just going to set those aside and let them cool. With the baked potato and chicken we're going to have a salad. I've got the salad leaves. I'd quite like to have this apple in it. Now if I cut that up now, it's just going to go brown. So normally you'd put lemon juice on it. I don't have a lemon, but I've got an orange. I'm fairly sure that'll work. But I think first we'll have the segments out of this orange. So we'll just cut. Just slice away the peel. I'm just following the line of the previous cut. There's very little waste that way. So we'll just go in there, just run the knife round like that. Any bits I didn't quite get right, we can just trim off. Now it might look on the camera like I'm cutting towards my fingers. That's partly camera angle. And also don't forget, I'm in control of this blade. If you feel like things are not in control, it might just be because you're watching rather than participating. Anyway, now I'm just going to cut in between the membranes to get nice peeled, pith-free orange segments out. Okay, so there are the segments. There's still quite a lot of orange there. So I'm just going to squeeze out the juice. Pretty good, I think we've got most of the good stuff out of that. Now I've got that standing by, I can cut up this apple. I won't have to worry too much about it going brown if I'm quick about it. Okay, and then I'll just give that a little toss just to make sure everything's coated. Hopefully that won't go brown. Don't often think of apples and oranges as going together. In fact, very often, apples and oranges is a way of talking about contrast. But those two flavours together, they're great. We'll just get our chicken back out of the oven. That'll do it, I reckon. So the stuffing balls are just nice and crispy. Potatoes are done. Garlic is soft. Chicken's crispy. I've got all the chicken and stuff out of the pan. This is the courgette. And there's also some bits in there of... That's the stuffing ball that's stuck to the pan. So all of that's going to go in this bowl. That pepper is now roasted and sweet. I'm going to save that for dinner. And of course I am going to deglaze this pan because there's so much flavour stuck on there. The chicken wings have hopefully cooled down to the point that they won't hurt me when I pick them over. And all of that meat's just going to go in that bowl together with the nicer bits of crispy skin and the bones and gristly bits are going to go straight in the pan of my pressure cooker. And some of this chicken will I'll serve for lunch, so we'll do that with the salad. And some of it I will reserve for dinner because I think we're going to do like a stew, a chicken stew. So yeah, I reckon about half of those chicken wings will probably do it. Surprising how much chicken's come off the bone there, actually, when you're just munching chicken wings straight off the bone. You don't realise maybe how much chicken you're eating. And the rest of those wings we'll save and that can go in the stew this evening. That didn't even touch the sides. Let's have a look and see what's happened to this garlic. Well, these cloves of garlic, I should just be able to squeeze the garlic out of them. Look at that. I'll taste that. I mean, it's really, really nice garlic flavour, but it's not harsh in any way at all. It's just this really savoury garlic flavour. So we'll have a few of these into here. Now, of course, that chicken's already been seasoned, so it doesn't need any more salt. Well, I don't think it does anyway. I don't know, there's about five or six cloves of garlic in there, roasted garlic. The rest of it I'll save in case we need something to make the soup more robust. And then I'll just give that a stir together to get that garlic distributed. Well, that might not look very promising, but you should smell it. Okay, 
taste for seasoning, chef's privilege. Mm. That doesn't need anything. Salad time. So we've got these wonderful mixed tomatoes and this pea shoot salad. It says washed and ready to eat. I tend to, yeah, no, that smells pretty fresh. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just have a sniff in the bag. If it smells like it just needs a bit of refreshing, then I'll give it a rinse, but I'm not gonna bother with that. So a nice bed of leaves. I don't know where the pea shoots are. Oh, there are the pea shoots, right, that's pea shoots there. The tomatoes, I'm just gonna halve them and scatter them over the salad. Really pretty little tomatoes, all different colors. The baked potatoes. Tiny little knob of butter in each one. The apple and orange salad. This has got the juice on it. So this is going to provide a little bit of a dressing for the salad. Okay. And then finally, this warm chicken on top. Just make a big stack of that. There we go. So, warm chicken salad. Oh, I almost forgot. The quickles. Now, I'm going to put mine on top. I will give Jenny the choice uh, on hers. So, I'm going to put mine on top of the chicken. Well, some of it stayed on top. But I'll let Jenny have the choice of whether she's going to have that or not. Right, I didn't know whether you'd want it on the top, so that's some quick pickled cucumber. Okay. Choose whether you want it on there or not. Okay. No? Okay. Dig in. If you want mayo or anything like that, we're allowed that on this challenge today, because we're allowed a little bit of sauce and this and that. Mmm. Mm. That's a nice salad. Mm. Good? Yeah. I did put a couple of stuffing balls on there. Because chicken and stuffing together. Mm. And it might seem a bit weird, but apple and orange together with chicken. Yeah, it goes alright. Totally works. Mm. Well, I think that might actually be the most enjoyable meal I've had on any of these challenge videos. Probably the most normal meal as well, because it was just a baked potato and a chicken salad. All the right ingredients were there, so we didn't have to kind of really bodge anything to make it work. Right, well that was a pretty good lunch. I think we both agreed on that. That was a satisfying and tasty lunch. Just got to organise the saves now for dinner. So we've got the roasted pepper there, I'm going to pick the rest of this chicken off into there. The bones will go into the pot, which will pressure cook, together with the deglaze from the roasting pan, which has got tons of flavour in it. I will also put in the pressure cooker the tomato water from these roasted tomatoes. And I might as well throw in the skins, the, these little bits and pieces of garlic. I'll probably keep some of these whole cloves out, but we can put all of those empty skins. Well, they're not really empty actually because I can't squeeze them out. So that'll all go in there in the pressure cooker for half an hour to make some stock. Also got six stuffing bowls left. This amazing chicken stock, I'm just skimming the fat off of it. I'm actually just skimming the top layer off the jug. You'll see why in a minute. Not because I want to get rid of the fat, but because I want to use it. Right, so in this smaller jug, I've got the kind of concentrated top layer of the stock, and there's a thin layer of fat there, you can see. All I'm going to do is use the turkey baster to remove the stock from underneath it. You can get separated jugs for this purpose. I used to make them out of glass, and they were all right, but rather fragile, because the spout joins at the bottom of the jug. Now they make them out of plastic and they just don't last very long. They get rough and sticky. I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see what's going on here. Okay, hopefully you can see there's a layer of fat and so tilting the jug like that means I can get the nozzle of the baster right into the bottom there. And just pick up stock. And what we've got left there is, well, it's got a little bit of stock in the bottom, but it's mostly chicken fat. 
that is like gold. Dinner's going to be fairly simple, mainly because we've not got a lot of things left. We've got some leftover cooked stuffing, some roasted pepper, some chicken, garlic. Got those two roasted tomatoes. I forgot to put that in the salad. I'm not going to use that actually for this. I'll save that and I'll have that tomorrow or something because there's some roasted pepper in here. And we've got these three little potatoes. So I'm going to make a soup, I think, and it's going to have beans in it. And I think we'll have a chicken and stuffing sandwich because there are a couple of muffins left from breakfast. I don't want this to take forever to cook, so I'm going to cut this into fairly small dice. Potatoes. Some of that gorgeous chicken stock. And we'll bring that to the boil and simmer until the potatoes are cooked. These roasted tomatoes. It is just going to be a case of getting the skins off. That's not going to take any cooking at all. And I don't want it to completely disappear. So I'm not going to chop it up in too finely. That's, that's as far as I'm going to take that. That's going to go into the soup like that. And that's going to be right at the end. That juice though, that can go straight in there now. But I will strain the seeds out. The muffins, again, I will fork and split and toast. It'd be nice to butter these muffins with something when they're toasted. And rather than just go, go and get some butter out of the fridge, I'm going to mix that chicken fat with some roasted garlic. And I'm just going to try and mash that garlic into that chicken fat like that. Tiny little pinch of salt in that. Okay, that's going to be good. Just to bring this chicken back to life, I'll just put that in a frying pan, give that a little sizzle. Pieces of potato, see how that's doing. Yep, that's nearly tender now. Now I know it's baked beans, but it is just beans in a tomato -y sauce. And so as an ingredient in soup, these will be fine. So about half of this tin will go in the soup. Muffins are done. And so those are gonna get a little bit of a drizzle of that garlic butter. Oh, garlic chicken butter, some slices of stuffing. Now of course this is just bread in a sandwich at the moment. I think this is gonna spill over. Overflowing chicken muffin and the soup. Chicken sandwich and soup. Let's get that to the table and give it a taste. There is more soup. Soup and a sandwich. Okay, well, dig in. Pepper, obviously for me. Eva, you'll get yours in a minute. So if this had a bit of pasta in it, it might be nearly minestrone. chicken stock's really good. Now, sandwich could be a bit of a disaster, but I figure if I just eat it over my bowl, anything that falls out becomes part of the soup. Mm. That's nice. Mm. Mm. That's really good. And my original plan was to have the stuffing balls in a soup like this, like little dumplings. It does kind of work. Verdict, Jenny? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Good. So here's the thing, only putting half that tin of beans in has made the soup taste of beans and tomato rather than baked beans. There's quite a bit of soup left. So there was enough soup there ready for four portions. Right, well, so at the end of the day, do you feel like you've been well enough fed today? Yeah. Yeah? And do you think anything was kind of missing out of this diet? I think it, I, I felt like that was pretty well rounded. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, salad was really nice. I think the salad was the highlight of the yeah. day. Although I did enjoy the sweet pizzas. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Not inclined to feel that I need to go and snack or anything like that. That's actually, soup is always really filling anyway. Yeah, soup is, yeah. Right, well, okay, back to the studio now for conclusions and wrap-up, I suppose. Well, that went pretty well, I think. In fact, this might have been the easiest one of these videos to date in terms of finding things to fit the budget and also then assembling those things into satisfying meals. 
There are a few obvious reasons for that. Firstly, this was a £5 budget for two people, so that affords a lot more flexibility, both on amount per head. And just scaling up to two people means it's worth buying slightly larger or more useful things that wouldn't work for half of this budget for one person. Economy of scale, even at this small scale. Also, of course, the choice of shop was little. Now, I have argued in the past that it would not have been easier to shop there for the £1 per day series, and I still think that's probably true. Little is cheaper for some things, but not necessarily for the smallest things, which was always what I needed to buy on the £1 budgets. And also, there were lots of quite useful and generous reductions, and I made good use of them. That £1.50 waste not fruit and veg box is tremendous value. Chicken wings for 88 pence was just a steal, and those two bargains left plenty of scope for making real choices on spending the remainder. In fact, I think it could be argued that other choices there could easily have stretched the budget to two days or more. For example, if I'd bought a kilo of rice or that pack of spaghetti, that chorizo and maybe a cabbage or cauliflower and maybe a can of sardines too. And I could have done some bulk prep on some things to save a bit of time and effort in the cooking. So yeah, maybe this was a bit easy for a budget challenge, but I think that's an interesting thing to have actually discovered. Maybe next I should put my money where my mouth is and see if I can make that £5 budget stretch for two people for two days. Oh, I nearly forgot to score the meals. Breakfast muffin sweet pizzas. Delicious, and Jenny agreed. I think I'd make this again. Different fruits for the sauce, like strawberries or blueberries, would work. Different cheeses too. And if you think this is weird, it's really not. It's just a cheesecake with the toppings reversed. 8 out of 10 for this one. Warm chicken salad. I really enjoyed this. Probably the best and nicest meal of the entire series. 9 out of 10. A proper dressing or sauce over that chicken would have made it 10 out of 10. Soup and sandwich. A little bit simple, but this was a tasty supper. Such a depth of flavour in that soup from the chicken stock and the roasted tomato and the pepper. And say what you like about baked beans, they were just right in there because it was beans and tomato without obviously being baked beans. I'll give it 7 out of 10. Something fresh and green chopped into the soup right before serving would have been quite nice. So that's about it for this one. I hope there was something in here to interest you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.